Don, can you give me a little bit of your background, just so we know who we're talking to? That's a long story. <laughs> I, uh, I've spent my life as an academic at the University of Chicago, uh, teaching sociology and doing research on Ethiopian society, which I started about 50 years ago, and uh, social theory and the history of sociology. Have been my two main areas. One of the things that was important in my personal development was the uh, the post-war World War II peace movement, and in particular the world government movement. I was very active in that in high school, and the leader of the Student Federalist, Harris Wofford who played an important role in the Kennedy administration and in the opening of the Peace Corps and more recently in the Obama campaign. Uh, he was a big inspiration to me and um, <clears throat> so I uh, made contact with the American Friends Service Committee. I went to three work camps and was more and more tilting toward pacifism, but I couldn't go whole hog. And, uh, and then the Korean War broke out, and that took the wind out of the sails of the world government movement. And many of us looked to what we then called the, the middle world, or became known as the third world, to get beyond the polarization of the world into the uh, Western and the Soviet camps. So that's part of what took me to Ethiopia for three years to do research. Uh, uh, the major initial result of that was my book, Wax and Gold, Tradition and Innovation in Ethiopian Culture which was published in 1965 and is still in print and is, has a big following. And one of the things I became aware of in Ethiopia was the, the vocation of the, of the warrior. And uh, Ethiopia has a long history of warfare and, uh, and, and being a warrior is a central value in Ethiopia. And so it kind of gave me another point of reference beside my pacifist inclinations. Um, years later, when the regime of Emperor Haile Selassie was overthrown, uh, he was deposed the very day that my second book called Greater Ethiopia, The Evolution of a Multi-Ethnic Society was published, September 12, 1974. And then he was succeeded by a very ruthless uh, communist regime called the Derg. And they aligned with the Soviet bloc. And so my access to Ethiopia, my interest in being involved was cut off. I stopped sending students there for dissertations. And it was in the wake of all that that I turned to Japanese culture. And began to study Aikido, which I discovered as a wonderful way of offering a, a blend between the way of the warrior and the way of nonviolence. And uh, so I pursued that starting in 1979, um, uh, exactly 30 years ago. Initially in Chicago for a year under Toyota Sensei, the late delightfully vivacious, um, uh, humorous uh, Toyota Sensei. And then I came to California. 
And that was, some of us think, the golden years of, of American Aikido in Northern California when Frank Duran Sensei, Bob Nadeau Sensei, Bruce Klickstein Sensei, many others were hitting their stride. They were starting this wonderful summer camp at San Rafael. Um, it was a great, good feeling around, and everybody was training in one another's dojos. They took their Don tests in different dojos with the senseis from the different organizations up there together. And I began there to experience, through the teachings of Duran Sensei and Nado Sensei, Aikido as far more than a martial art technique, albeit one oriented to nonviolence. And I began to see some of the implications of Aikido for life all around. And that was the year 8081, which was crucial. I came back to Chicago and was looking for something like that. I didn't find it, so I had to piece it together myself in my own dojo at the University of Chicago over the years. And at that time, when I returned, I was appointed as dean of the college. And uh, one of the things I wanted to do was bring some of the California spirit into what had been a very depressive atmosphere at the University of Chicago. So I began to introduce just a lot of reforms, such as time out for a reading and review period, um, uh, social activities, martial arts clubs, uh, and, um, and a winter festival modeled on what I had experienced in California at Aikido West, uh, Kangeko. So I started in 1982, or was it 83, my first full year as dean, a Kangeko program at the university, which persists to this day. Nobody knows that anymore that I was the one who started it. But it has hundreds of people, hundreds of students get up at six in the morning for five days in the week. And they come and they stretch, they work out, they do some physical activity, Asian fitness arts or basketball or whatever. And then on one day they march out in the snow to the lake and do the salute to the sun. One out of six times the sun actually comes up at that point, but that doesn't matter, okay? And so in the course of that, I came to give a, a talk called The Liberal Arts and the Martial Arts. 